sea pigeons, think pheasants. Crow is getting game season fit with all the kit. Fancy winning a shot cam worth hundreds of pounds, euros and dollars? We have one to give away to a lucky viewer. Plus, ever wondered how they get that red dot in the centre of your illuminated reticle? Well, we're at the Zeiss factory in Germany to see the finest one in the world being made. Even I can't make a hairnet look cool. From a beautiful landscape in the highlands of Scotland, welcome to Field Sports Britain. While others grab a skinny latte and a granary baguette, Crow kills a couple of hours killing pigeons. Do you want to be in the shade, David? He's had a hectic summer with plenty still to do, but he's noticed a few hundred pigeons on wheat stubble on what he calls the dippy field. It was only a few weeks ago we were here protecting the ripening crop from fallow with his ticker T3, but today it's a chance to remind the pigeons it's not a healthy place to be before they move on to his lupins. You might recognise the field, there's a high seat over there. This is where we shot the deer the other day. This was the last field that we cut. There's been a few pigeons getting on it. We started ripping up some of the stubble, so the pigeons are congregating on here. Just going to roll and cut the bales down. They hide just away from the wood, so I'll shoot some stuff behind me. Bit of a flattish area there, level area, so I'm going to stick some decoys on that and just see what happens. Andy's height looks good enough to glamp in, oh, and his attention to detail extends to his decoys. Don't ruffle their feathers. Well, when I want them for decoys, I usually carry them by the tip of the wing. Otherwise, you carry them by the neck, you, you mess up their, their white ring around their neck. If you hold them by the tail, nine times out of ten, that'll fall out. So, I always carry them on the tip of the wing. You don't need that for a decoy, so if you carry it by the neck, you mess up the, the ring feathers. If you carry it by the tail, there's a good chance it's going to pull the tail out. So. Always carry them by the tip of the wing. So how was your kit today then, David? Lovely. Yeah. Does it work? So you've got flat batteries or crap on the lens. So we had a very good start. You've dragged me off the off of what I was doing to come and shoot some pigeons a bit quick with all your new gear and most of it doesn't work, David. It's just like I can shoot some pigeons. Yeah. Right. That might not work. Well it might do, David. Uh, mine, more chance of yours working. More chance of mine, mine working than yours, David. That's 100% yeah. sure. Right, I must get on. Back to basics today. Yeah, back to basics. Yeah, no electrics. Hazel sticks. I've got a couple of cradles there. Hazel sticks. A few pigeons out the chiller uh, that we shot yesterday. Um, but yeah, three days in a row I've been out now, David. Crow is using this outing as a chance for some pre-game season flight checks, such as trying out some of Game Boy's high-performance game loads or reacquainting himself with the Beretta 692. Over the summer, Crow has been ploughing through the clear pigeon, putting 4,000 shells through the Beretta A400 semi-auto, so needs to literally get back into the swing of things. One. <laughs> we all have lucky shots, David. That's one of them. He's been particularly impressed with the clear pigeon this summer, thanks especially to some new chokes he's had on test, but more about those next time. For today, it's the Dark Storm and the ever popular, award winning Black Gold. The new Regal shell is a traditional game cartridge for the lighter gun and it replaces the pure gold range. These are three game loads that. Game Boy sent me down. These are their high performance game loads. You've got your Regal, which is for your lightweight side by sides. These are more the, the big boy stuff. You've got your Black Gold with your Gordon system. And then you've got your uh, Dark Storm. They're all diamond shot, but me, I'll be shooting long range stuff, so I'll be using either of these two. I like either of these. Crow has asked permission to shoot here because he's right next to the pheasant pens, but at this time of year, Crow says they won't be disturbed. A bit different later on in the season. Once I've been shot out a few times, been chased about, 
they're on their toes a bit more, but this time, yeah, I'm doing him a favour really because it's on the boundary, so any pheasants that I do push back, they'll be pushing them back in land, so, or back into the chute, so it ain't a problem. Talking of pheasants, Cray has a couple of invites for some driven days, but one comes at a cost. Um, Jack Pike boys sort me out a day, so that's usually modelling as well, so I don't, <laughs> there's always an ulterior motive with, uh, with the Jack Pike boys. I think they just like seeing me strip off in the middle of a field. So where are these pigeons that we're going to treat as pheasants? Pigeons, if you will. You want it? So they're decoying brilliantly today. Oh, they hell. <laughs> no, they're not decoying very well. But the thing is, I'm shooting really well. Uh, I'll tell you what, I just uh, had a little play with it yesterday and the trigger pull on this is totally different to the, the A400, the semi, but I've got to get used to this because of game shooting and that. And I've had a, had a couple of, the first couple I shot at, the old gun went off before I was ready, or before I was full on it, I just touch the trigger and away she goes, but I've, I've got the hang of it now, I've had a few lucky shots today, but no, performing really well, especially with these cartridges. I wish I could afford to use them all the time. So, let's see what's been so the decoying hasn't worked, but the crops full of lupins give us the reason why. Andy has just sprayed them off and the wheels of the tractor have split some pods. Happy days for the pigeons. It's got wheat, which he's probably picked up earlier. Then we disturbed him. He's cleared off with all his mates. I'm gonna eat my lupins. If they want them now, what are they going to be like in a month's time? These are going to go to China. That We've grown them for a seed contract. they got more protein than what soya's got. They're going animal feed and that. They taste good too as well. Really? Yeah. Do you want to try something? It tastes like... Tastes like looping. I thought you were shoes as fit as me, David. It's been a very gentle afternoon with some cracking shots and Crow is well on target with his pre-season training. Some of those pigeons I shot today were exceptionally long pigeons and you can remember those but like I've always said you don't go pigeon shooting to make money you go pigeon shooting to enjoy it well done crow and poor show David for getting the shot cam especially as we have one to give away this very neat little camera unit worth hundreds of quid fits underneath the barrel of your shotgun and we find it incredibly useful for recording shooting of game and pests and clays and also as a as a training aid the owners of shot cam have got one ready to post out to one of you lot the viewers on our youtube page or our facebook page just leave the word shot cam in the comments below like last week's Harkila Slim Pack competition results of that will be announced in two weeks time. This one closes ooh, sometime before the end of September and we'll announce the winner in early October. Now from the man who gets everything wrong, it's Mr Wright with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. An anti-hunting TV host has got together with shooter Rachel Carey to make a programme about shooting sports. I don't think there's anything sexy about that photo at all. Oh, I... Former Glamour model Jodie Marsh described Rachel as murdering scum before she met her for a TV show on the TLC channel. However, she comes around to Rachel's way of thinking. British TV presenter Piers Morgan has been bullying children again. How would you feel if I came to your house one day and I hunted down your pet cat and I killed it and I then posted pictures of me celebrating the slaughter of your pet cat. In an interview on TV show well, Good Morning Britain, he lost yeah, his temper with 12-year-old yeah, big game hunter Ariana Gordon and threatened to shoot her cat. There's a change in the way that the police and GP share information about gun certificates in England and Wales the police will contact a GP to request medical information as soon as an application is received, rather than once a certificate has been issued. Basque welcomes the changes, but reminds shooters not to pay fees requested by GPs for responding to the police's first request for information. Fees still have to be paid for subsequent requests. 
A prominent Australian anti wants the government to pay for fox trapping and relocation. The Greens, NSW and Animal Justice Party's Mark Pearson wants to end fox shooting in Australia. Robert Borsak of the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party hits back at calls for a Sydney fox rescue service. The bottom line is that introduced species, whether they be pigs, feral cats, wild dogs or foxes, are pests, not pets. And finally, Chris Packham wants sheep replaced by lynx. Speaking at the Royal Geographical Society, the anti-hunting BBC presenter says sheep have turned Britain's uplands into green deserts and would like to see lynx, beaver and boar in their place. The NFU says the uplands need more sheep, not fewer. You are an up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, I don't spend my days standing around in front of beautiful Scottish landscapes. I've been off to Germany to find out how they make that little red dot that goes inside your scope. I've come to a place where they really do dot the I's and cross the T's. They put the world's finest red dots here at Zeiss into their reticles. The last time we were here at the Zeiss factory in Wetzlar, we were looking at the production of the Duralit rifle scope. That was six years ago. This time we are here to find out as much as they'll allow us about the finest red dot illuminated reticle in the industry. And again, that means funny clothing. Yes, but like I said, you look very, very dashing. Thank you very much. Very kind of you to say. What is this glass box? Do? Yeah, so this is uh, this is where we're creating the world's finest illumination right here, Charlie. We're actually taking this very fine reticle. You can oh, see how super fine sweet. that yeah. is. It's actually two micrometers, which is two thousandths of a millimeter. Super, super fine. That's the that's the tolerance on the machine that makes it. Yes, it is. That's right. And so what's happening in this process here is we're taking the reticle and it's being put into this retaining clip. What kind of metal is this? It's. Uh, it's a metal. It's a metal. <laughs> it's a foil type metal. You're not going to tell me, are I'm you? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> this would make a really great kind of a deer stalker's monocle, wouldn't it? Hey, Charlie, don't show that. That's our next prototype oh, project. Brilliant. That's very clever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do we do with this? Uh, well, how do we get yeah. the red the red dot into this? Sure, let me show you that. This cool. is really cool. You've got to see this process okay. over here. We're actually gluing a glass fiber down the thinnest part of this reticle. Super, super fine. Look, it works like this. You've got the top reticle and you glue that fibre down the middle and the red dot comes out of the middle just there, is that right? Yeah, right at the centre of the cross here is where it will end. So I can show you the hair here. This is a human hair and this yeah. is actually the fibre there, so you can see yeah. how much thinner that is than a human hair. You know, we have to make sure that it's glued in the proper place yep. and also we have to make sure that we cut it and polish it. It has to be cut at an angle so that the light reflects back to the user. And uh, that, the cutting and polishing is done right here in this machine. We simply clamp this in here and it goes up and it cuts it off and polishes it to a crystal clear transmission type device. There's so much could go wrong with this. How, how do you know that that red light is right? I'm glad you asked that as well. And that's done right here on this machine as well. The screen light here means that that is working properly. The, it's cut and polished and the light is transmitting right through the, the glass fiber perfectly. Excellent. So this, this will go into the next process now. Okay, and what is that next process? Yes, yeah, let's go over here. This is really cool. We're <laughs> going to show you how to build a uh, illumination system. Excellent. So this is where that reticle that we just saw being assembled is eventually going to end up. And this is the... Uh, is it the bit that goes inside the scope? Yes. You, you, I can see where you can kind of twist it to yep. get... Is that magnification or, or focus? This is exactly what it is, Charlie. Okay. This is basically a tube inside of a tube is what it is. This sets inside the, the tube, and when you would make your adjustments up or down, or left or right, this is what you're moving. Okay. And then when you're changing magnification, this is what's sliding back and forth to bring it into focus as you go up in power and down in power. So where does it go from here? Yeah, so Charlie, once the, she starts the uh, production of the erector tube, it goes all the way down through here. They're getting to the final production of the erector tube. They're coming around here. Now they're starting to add the uh, oculars on, the objectives on, the lenses and so forth. And then it comes to here where all the electronics are put in. It's beginning to look a lot like a scope yes. now, isn't it? When it gets here, it looks really like a scope. So There's a lot of people working here. How many people work in this, this, this bit alone? Just in the rifle scope cell here is 50 people. 50 people. And I mean, why don't you move production to China? Why don't you make the whole thing cheaper? Oh, no, 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 no. This is German hand-built product, only in Germany here. Okay, take me, take me to the end. What do you actually end up with? Yes, here we have a piece of finest uh, rifle scope in the world, our Victory V8. Okay, I'd like to see this, this, this kind of thing in action. Is there, is there anywhere we could go and try this red dot out? Let's go down in the hole and give her a shot. Okay, let's go. 
It must be a really fun office to work in. It really is. It's the kind of office where, I don't know, you could so easily just find lying around a wild ball. You certainly could. You saw the red dot on the board down there. And Charlie, one really cool thing about this that I told you the whole time is it's the finest illumination in the world. That dot on that target, super, super small target coverage. So it, you're able to see a target and, and make the shot as well. And what's super cool now that we have the scope all together is I can tell you how this illumination system works. So this is our new intelligence switch. You simply turn it on and off by the button here, dim your your, your brightness level up or down. So your red light goes on there and, and you can change the brightness. Yep, you can change it up or down. And then what's really cool about this is the intelligence switch that we have in here. If you turn your rifle 45 degrees in either direction or up or down, the light goes off. This is our energy conservation system. Okay, that's yes. good. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I get that. at rest, it's off. You pick it up, shoulder the rifle, the, the light comes back on and you're able to see. So you're conserving battery power and so forth. Now, if you don't like that, you can deactivate this system as well and have a manual on and off simply by holding the scope upside down, pulling the button on for five seconds and that goes away. But then now you're stuck to manually turning it on or off. It also means that if you're storing the rifle upright like that, you don't have to remember to wake up in the middle of the night and turn it off. Exactly. Good, exactly. good, good thing. We've seen the scope being made and the technology involved, but what about the history? With Zeiss, there's always history. This is the world of reticles according to Charlie. This is your original wire reticle, like putting a paperclip in the middle of your scope, but it's what we all used in the 1970s. Move forward to the 1980s and we've got the glass reticle, that's pretty common. And then after that came the super etched reticle. This is one of the finest reticles of its time, but when the red dot came along, we had to move back to the glass reticle, a slightly better one. Now fast forward to today and we have the foil reticle. This is an object of great beauty. It's a special metal, we're not allowed to know what it is, but the illuminated dot goes down the top bar here and pokes out the middle at a 45 degree angle and gives you that beautiful red crispy circle. Interestingly, that red crispy circle was given a boost back in the day when the red dot was banned, but all that did was secure its future. The red dot reticle was banned for about one year in the early 90s um, because the government said that is not an ethical hunting and, and there were some misunderstandings about the function of the red dot. Well, it was for the hunting, it was uh, the best marketing ever because for one year everybody was talking about it and afterwards all the hunters knew the technology, knew what is the advantage and therefore the boom really took off in, in Germany and over the last almost 30 years or more than 30 years now, the uh, illuminated reticle is the only one you sell. Cut to today and Zeiss as a company with many departments can tap into some of the best scientific minds in the business. Coming together as the innovation board, this is brainstorming at a very high level. Zeiss's red dot was one part of some blue sky thinking. We have the different business units like the microscopy, like the semiconductor business and industrial uh, measurement technology and all these teams come together in an innovation board and if somebody has a solution or has a question or need, is looking for technologies you can bring that up into this innovation board then the other um, business units start to think about and maybe out of the other business units like in, in the Red Dot situation come up with a solution and today the idea was that we wanted to have the finest red dot in the world. Smaller than everybody else, brighter than everybody else and also um, when you shoot on the long distance shot that the coverage on the target is as small as possible. I hope that explains the work that goes into creating something that is fast becoming an industry standard, an illuminated red dot reticle. But Zeiss produces the finest in the world. From Germany to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. There are not enough Irish channels devoted to shooting, in my opinion, so it's a pleasure to discover Glenn's hunting and shooting. In this film he shows pigeon shooting over laid wheat in Ireland, filmed in August. Clothing company Harkila has released a wild boar hunting film shot in the village of Harkila in Sweden. Hannes Dickoff from ammunition manufacturer RWS is the shooter, you may recognise him from Field Sports Channel films. The others in the film are Kiel Lennartsen and his son Emil, who are the son and grandson of Lennart Davidson, who founded the famous Harkila dog kennel back in 1952 and grew the business to include Harkila hunting clothes. In the USA, Backcountry Brotherhood spends an action-packed four days hunting wolves in Idaho. This is about the closest YouTube comes to a cowboy film. Australian antis want to create a new national park, the Great Forest National Park, because it will stop hunting with hounds across nearly a million acres of what is currently publicly owned state forest. Viewer Simon Dillon sends in this film which shows hounds hunting samba deer in Victoria. Like with British stag hunting, the hounds bring the stag to bay, they don't kill it. There is a new group of antis backing Chris Packham in his Malta spring hunting campaign called Champions of the Flyway. It is led by Israeli bird watchers who want to stop all shooting of birds in the Mediterranean area, not just Malta. Despite this mathering, the conservation status of the European turtle dove, the main bird shot in Malta spring hunt, remains at least concern. And here is a film from Turkey about turtle dove shooting, because everybody does it. Erdli Rudman is known locally in South Africa as the hog father, one of the leading lights in Blaukrantz safaris. He specialises in baiting in bush pigs. This is part one of a ten-part film about his hunts by US channel Whitebone Creations. Jonas Breda brings out a beautiful moodly shot film about beaver hunting. It is still a really funny word thanks to the naked gun. Jonas is after the European beaver in his and their native Scandinavia. And finally she said she wasn't hunting. It's a bust. Texas shooters are out after morning doves but they have to have a license. Texas game wardens are after to unlicensed shooters, and they catch a woman who tries to hide her gun. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now you have got to watch this one. It is our own. It is Field Sports Africa. <laughs> This month we find out what it takes to become a professional hunter. Not only do they need to build rifle mount muscle memory by lifting these pipes 30,000 times during the course, but they also need to make 50 approaches on bull elephants and other dangerous game. We're also after an old Impala round with Nico in the Eastern Cape. You should really watch it. The Kruger is the classroom and the 18 month course with accommodation and meals cost about the same as the fees for a single year at a UK university. We all want to sign up. Well that's it for this week, if you haven't done so already please go to our website fieldsportschannel.tv where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube or pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you weekly about our show Field Sports Britain is at 7pm UK time and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and from a very midgy Scotland, goodbye. <laughs>